Hello there guys, it's Glamit here and today we are going to be discussing data crons. What are they and should you be worried? If you did not know, the road ahead was released yesterday and it's interesting. There's a lot in there for us to unpack, both related to data crons and other areas of the game. Before we get going, I just wanted to touch on the Grand Inquisitor. We have got information about him guys. So he's going to be coming out on the 22nd of June and he will be available for an additional seven days it's going to be a seven part event so hopefully it's not too hard there you do need the right five inquisitors and they do say he has potential to work with empire makes me wonder is this what's going to make lord vader good we'll find out soon anyways we're not here to talk about grand inquisitor we are here to talk about data crons and i'm sure a lot of you are worried about this i've seen in the community already a lot of people are either quitting or just panicking about this and i kind of want to just give you guys the facts i'm not here to say this ones are bad you know i'm not here to say data crons are great i'm just here to tell you what they are and how it's going to affect you okay so data crons are essentially like a mod think of it like a mods 2.0 so you have your mods on a character which increase like certain stats and then on top of that you will now have a data cron now, a data cron is not like a mod in the sense that it will be around forever. What will happen is every month or every so often, we don't know yet for certain, the, the data crons will essentially break down into resources to then use for the next batch. And the idea is that current the current meta is, for example, JMK uh, Cat is, is the meta, right? And then you have other teams like Aiden and Dash, and you have all of those characters in the meta. And the idea is, CG want to change that. Now, obviously, they want to change it for revenue reasons. Makes sense. If there's more teams that are meta, there's more money to be made. However, for the general player, this does have potential. Like, if you're lower GP, and you've gone for a Star Killer Rush, or if you've gone for a Rush for SLKR or Ray there's a chance that your characters may be the ones that get bonuses from datacrons and that does change things so think of it kind of like changing the meta what is interesting is they have described it as datacrons are intended to be a way to temporarily raise the power level and usefulness of wider set of squads without disrupting the long-term investments they have actually given the example of a mother talzin datacron and we'll get to that later but it does look interesting and it goes back to this whole thing. Some people have invested in Night Sisters, but Night Sisters fall off really, really quick. They aren't, they just don't do it at the end game. Or even the middle game. They just get beaten too easily. But with Data Crons, all of a sudden, this team that a lot of people have but don't use becomes usable. So there are benefits and drawbacks of Data Crons there. Here is the next thing that is quite interesting, which I think a lot of people haven't really touched on. Datacrons, whilst I said they're like mods, they are and they aren't. They're not like mods in the sense that every character has datacrons. It's that when you go into a battle, the datacron is active. So you kind of like pick and choose when you set the team. It's almost like setting a sixth member. And and you can again like the last video, it's me swapping between gameplay and, and me. And at the moment, you'll be seeing, here we go. So Lord Vader is in the top left. We then have the Datacron active in the bottom right. And the way the Datacrons work is there's three tiers. So you level them up. And at each tier, they unlock new bonuses. So the first tier will just be a general bonus for light side or dark side. The second tier will be a bonus for faction. And the last tier will be a bonus for the individual character. Now, what this means is that you won't want to level up every datacron that you get some datacrons you might only want to leave at the lowest level and then you'll still be able to get those boosts on those teams so for example there may be a datacron that works with lord vader now he may not have a individual datacron but the bonuses may work with him and cg describe it as datacrons are the new way to upgrade the squads with temporary special abilities and buffs in grand arenas and territory wars these can bring a great squad to the next level or boost an underused older squad and characters back to relevancy they are applied at the squad select screen and will be visible when viewing enemy squads so this is something for you guys to watch out for there is no worry of datacrons 
being invisible and we're not knowing about them. It's not like when Omicron's got released and you just had to guess if someone had one. We are going to know from the get-go and we are going to know who it boosts and how. And they give the example here of the Inquisitors. Now the Inquisitor one it is a level 9 Datacron. So like we said, level 3 Datacrons is the boost for the light side, dark side. Level 6 Datacrons are the boost for the faction. And level 9 are the boost for the characters. In this example, 5th Brother is the individual character that sees a boost. So here we can see what a Datacron does. We've got the level 3 unlocked. And like I said earlier, you might not actually want to upgrade them to max. That just depends on how common datacrons are and how accessible they are as well. So the example given here is that it affects dark side allies and whenever a dark side ally stuns or dazes an enemy, they recover 10% health and protection. Now that datacron on itself could make a team very, very useful. You know, dazes, stuns, all of those fun things. I could see that working in like a Palpatine team, for example, with the stuns. So there are potential for Datacrons with low investment to make an average team or a good team even better. And here is an example of a Datacron in detail. So at level 1, it gained 16% tenacity. At level 2, it gained 18% potency. At level 3, we gain the whenever a light side ally dazes or stuns an enemy, they recover health and protection. And it doesn't show the level 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9. But the interesting thing is on the right hand side, as you can see here, you can actually see the details of what can be unlocked and what can't. So in this example, it's saying it can target health, protection, crit damage, potency, tenacity or health still. Now these are very, very interesting and they can definitely change teams. And if we look in the bottom right, you can see that we're not even using credits, we're using a new currency on top of the new materials. You can only equip your level 1 to 3 Datacrons if you have a gear 13 character. You need Relic 1 to 3. Now, if you want to equip a level 4 to 8 Datacron, you need a Relic 5. And level 9 Datacrons are only available to be used on Relic 7 characters or higher. Now, this is very important. And this is why you really need to fill out your teams. If you're planning a roster, you need to make sure you fill out your teams. And this is why the Datacrons are going to become more effective uh, later game because we're going to have more of these teams to apply them to. The problem here that I can see is if you're very early game and someone has a gear, two gear 13 teams, they could apply two Datacrons to that team. The interesting thing is it doesn't say it, the Datacron doesn't affect the team. I think you still equip it the same way. But what will happen is the Datacron just won't affect certain characters in the team. If that makes sense to you guys. And CG have explained this here. This means a squad may not get all the bonus stats. But as long as everyone besides the character targeted in level 9 is at relic 5. And the target character is relic 7. The targeted character will get the level 9 bonus mechanics. So yes, it kind of, you put it in. And uh, what happens is... The Datacron will affect the team, but if a character individually doesn't meet these requirements, they will just not get the bonuses. Now, this is very interesting because once I show you the list of characters who are affected by these for the upcoming one, you will see that now you can really prioritize who, get those, who gets those higher relics and who doesn't. If a character doesn't get these big bonuses from the max level and you don't have them at high relics, there's no reason to change them. The other interesting thing here is say you use characters outside of their factions, like for example Gideon may be used in different factions, there is a reason to leave him at Relic 3 and the reason being you can save resources and he will still gain the, the dark side light side bonuses but he just won't gain the faction bonuses. And here we have a more detailed Datacron, so over here we have the level 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. And we can see the level 6 bonus is a faction bonus and the example they've given us is whenever an inquisitorious ally starts their turn with fewer than two buffs all allies gain 15 percent turn meter next up we have another example of a datacron and this one's being used with lord vader now the level 3 bonus is whenever a dark side ally starts their turn with at least three buffs that can be dispelled they gain five percent offense stacking until the end of the encounter 
And the second one is an Inquisitor one, and whenever Inquisitor allies start their turn with at least two debuffs that can be dispelled, they have a 65% chance to dispel all debuffs on themselves. I will look at this, and this is an example of a data coin that I don't think would work with the suggestion they've given. So you'd have to really plan and adapt the data crons as you go along. Really look at them and try and understand the team you're using and why you would want to use that with them. So here we have a little section on the currency, which is called the data cache. And the currency does not change between data crons. All data crons use the same currency, which is a nice thing to know. And here we have a few examples of data crons. I'm sure there's going to be more when they release these, so this is not a final statement on this. However, the ones they've given are whenever a dark side character starts their turn with these two buffs that can be dispelled, they gain the offense stacking. The second one is the one we've spoken about a few times, which is about dazes. And on light side, this one is quite interesting, I find. Whenever a light side character allies start their turn, for each enemy with fewer than 4 debuffs, that ally gains 30% potency until the end of their turn. I find that very interesting and I think there's a lot that can be done there. And then we have some faction specific bonuses. Galactic Republic, at the start of the encounter and the end of their turn, Galactic Republic allies gain 1 stack of retaliate for 3 turns which can't be just copied, dispelled or prevented. Retaliates when damaged by an attack deal 20% of the damage received per stack. Whenever Galactic Republic characters' allies inflict stagger or stun on an enemy, they deal bonus damage equal to 35% of that enemy's max health. That is another data crop buff right there. And finally, they give the example of whenever a Galactic Republic ally grants a buff to another ally, that ally gains 10% turn meter once per turn. And this is where the RNG can set in. If you are looking for a Datacron to use with JMK, you would not take that final one to the max level. And the reason being, if that landed on JMK, the middle one or the level 5 upgrade would not work with him because his team is immune to all turn meter changes. So this is something you guys need to think about when you're doing these and you're trying to save resources. It's not going to be a matter of oh, I've unlocked a Datacron, let's take it from level 1 to level 7, it's going to be really about thinking, do I actually benefit from unlocking the level 7 for this character? And I've seen some of the characters that are available here, Ayala Sakura, JMK. Now, Ayala, Ayala Sakura would be an interesting one for this, but JMK would just not work. And here is an example for Mother Talzin. Like I said, I am very hyped for this one. So... Um, they've also given one for Ayala Sakura. So these are just examples. We know JMK's one, so we'll see if that pops up down here as well. For Sakura, whenever an ally recovers protection, she gains foresight for one turn, and whenever an enemy is stunned, she takes a bonus turn. And the interesting thing is these are separate data crons. You might want to use one in one place, and you might want to use the other somewhere else. There is the option to swap these. And next we have Mother Towson, and some of these are really, really fun. So the first one is allies revived by the Great Mother, recovering additional 50% health and are not defeated after resisting. And next up we have at the start of each of Mother Towson's turns, they reset their cooldowns and lose 5% health for each turn. The ability was reduced, and Mother Towson can't be defeated this way. And finally, whenever another ally attacks during Mother Towson's turn, Mother Towson and that ally gain 25% turn meter. There is a lot of potential here. And next up, and this is the interesting part of all of this, you can re-roll your data crons. So if you don't like one of the three big buffs it gives you, you have the possibility to re-roll them. Now, we don't particularly know how to re-roll them, and that um, information is not widely available to us. It is, however, said that the re-roll will not refund you the material so i'm assuming it's a material input to re-roll and it just doesn't tell us that information and here we have three examples or two re-rolls for the one you already have so it's saying the one we have here is whenever a light side ally starts their turn for these three buffs that can be dispelled they gain five percent offense stacking until the end of the encounter now the next two are the whenever they lose four debuffs and we know about that one that's one we could select or we could select whenever a light side ally gains above, they recover health and protection, which is very interesting. And that last one just gives me Grandmaster Yoda vibes. And finally, and I know this video is getting on a bit, guys, so I'll try and edit it and speed it up. 
but for the most part, I hope I'm answering all your questions about data crons. So the final section of this is going to be about how do we get these data crons? You know, we've spoken about what they are and all of that fun stuff, but how do we actually access them? Well, to begin with, data crons will be available from Conquest in each sector, so that is the first avenue to get them. Secondly, Datacrons will have a store, a bit like the shipment store and the crystal store will be able to buy Datacrons. And finally, they will be available in packs. Now, this is both paid packs and free packs. Now, I've seen a lot of people speculating that this is the end for a lot of people and that the whales will come supreme and can take over the world or something like that. No, I don't think that's what's going to happen. I may be wrong. But my opinion is that it's going to be like Satyrs. I think the majority, like 80% of all of these, is going to be in Conquest. And then the majority of the rest of them that you'll get the 20% will be from shipments. And finally, I'm going to assume that the packs will not be every day. I think the packs will come and go like the mod packs and like the Zeta packs. The interesting thing here is that it really incentivizes you to play Conquest. Guys, if you don't already, you should already be playing Conquest. It's important for your roster just unlocking those conquest characters and trying your hardest the thing i do like about this is that it does give normal conquest a reason to play the important thing here though is it does say hard mode conquest will have better rewards than normal however normal mode is still going to give good data crons it just means you'll have to progress towards the end of conquest before you get those good ones Datacrons can also be found in Territory Wars, Weekly Shipments, and Daily Login Calendars, along with packs and bundles. We already know about this, guys. This is just the way the game is. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying I like it. I'm just saying, just be prepared. Interestingly, they are going to be in Territory Wars, so I wonder what the incentive is for Territory Wars. Is it going to change the meta? Are we going to have people really trying to win now? I think a lot of people would agree with me when I say Territory Wars have become a little bit stale. I enjoy them, but I know there's a lot of you who don't. So the fact that there's now that incentive to play, because let's remember guys, these Datacrons do matter in GAC and do matter in Territory War. So it is important that we take that into account. And here we go. So this is where they are being found. So the most recent set will be found primarily in Conquest. And then the rest will be in shipments, daily login calendars, and territory wars. The upgrade materials for MK1 and 2, so that is the level 1 and 2 ones, are going to be found from dismantling them, conquest, territory wars, shipments, and calendars. The MK3 ones will be found from conquest hard, territory wars, dismantling uh, datacrons, and shipments. And remember, a lot of you are going to be saying, ah, but this is just meaning if you're not a high GP, you're not going to have access. Remember, the Datacrons don't apply to lower relic levels anyways. So you're still going to be able to get your level 3 Datacrons, you just might not be able to get your level 5. And the currency is going to be available from Conquest, Territory Wars, and Shipments. And here we have a graphic which shows us in detail the progression of Datacrons. Now the interesting thing here is they really want to keep the meta changing. So you'll have in total 3 Datacrons active at one time. And after the three periods, that first one will be dismantled, it will be gone. But then during that, we already have a second and third Datacron introduced. So what this does is it just keeps things fresh. And let me just remind you guys, these are three month periods, that's what we would assume. It may be longer, it may be shorter. But it's not like it's a one week thing and it's gone. The other thing is we don't know how accessible these Datacrons are. So we need to take into account the fact that we can dismantle them and gain back some of those resources and put them into new ones could be interesting. And the next thing is, we have to remember that these Datacrons are probably going to be boosting newer characters that get released. So by being able to unlock them, you might be able to use your Gear 3 Inquisitors and GAC. You might be able to use your Galactic Republic if you don't have them working. The idea is the meta will always be shifting. And here we go. So these are the actual dates they've given. Now these are subject to change, like I've said. The dates they have given are June the 14th through to September the 4th. So that is the first Datacron set. The second one will be the July 11th to October the 2nd. 
And I know this video is taking a while, but I really want to make this in depth. It may turn out to be a 20 to 30 minute video, and I do really apologize, guys. But I just want to make sure you all have all the information possible. Look, I get it. It's worrying. Datacrons are scary. They, they are a big, big change. It was like it with mods. It was like it with other stuff. It is scary. But I'm just trying to give you guys the information. Now, if you want to hear my opinion, I, I'm i mixed. I like some of it, I don't like the other stuff. But we aren't here to discuss whether I like it or whether the game's dying. I'm just here to give you the information you need to take advantage of these changes. And I hope you guys can understand that. So, we're going to continue talking here and we're going to look at some of these stats. Now, this is in the spoiler section, so these are potentially what we're going to see. So, we're seeing bonuses to health, protection, crit damage, potency, tenacity, and health still. I really like the health still changes. I think that could be very, very interesting. I can see characters like uh, veteran Han Solo becoming meta with these changes potentially. We just don't know yet. Next up, we have the level 4 to 5 bonuses, and they are health, protection, crit damage, potency, tenacity, and health still again. But there is such a high potential to get like 100 to 150% health still with these datacron changes. Now, the other interesting thing is it has actually made it clear that when you re-roll, you're re-rolling the level 3, 5, and 9 bon uh, bonus modifiers, you're not actually re-rolling the stat modifiers. So again, like with upgrading mods, you might see these secondary stats and not like the datacron. Uh, for example, if you're rolling potency twice and you're rolling it for a team that doesn't need potency, then why are you investing in the datacron? Uh, just, just think with your minds, guys, when, you, when you're doing this, just think for a second, does this work for the team I need? And this is more of something for lower game players. You might only have one team that can use a datacron, so you really need to think about what you're upgrading and why. Next up we have some of the dark side mechanics here, so we've got a few here. We've got whenever dark side allies start their turn with at least 3 buffs that can be dispelled, they gain 5% offense stacking, we have seen this one. And next up we've got the health and protection, we've also seen that one. Then we've got the days, we've also seen that one. This seems to be a trend guys. Okay, here we go, here's a new one we have not seen. Whenever a dark side ally inflicts at least 4 debuffs in a turn, they have a 10% chance to reduce their cooldowns by 1. For each debuff they inflicted that turn. I'm telling you now guys, that is huge for Lord Vader. If you have Lord Vader, you get this Datacron. Trust me, it's, it's a win. Because for each debuff you inflict, well, Lord Vader's inflicting, you know, 4, 5, 6 debuffs a turn. It's absolutely crazy. Lord Vader is going to then be reducing his own cooldowns, so... You know, that complaint, ah, he doesn't get his ultimate very quick. Yeah, guys, he's going to be getting his ultimate extremely quick. And it also makes you wonder if this is going to help beat that Fennec counter. And the final example they've given is whenever Dark said allies start their turn, for each enemy with fewer than four debuffs, the ally gains potency stacking. Next up, we have the light side ones. And it would appear, guys, that the buffs or the datacrons are the same for light and dark you just need to hope you get the correct ones here but what i will say is i'm very excited for that lord vader one i think that there's a lot that can be done with that next up we have the factions so we have inquisitors and there are so many i'm sorry guys the video is going to become so long um we will try and go through them all so we're gaining buffs the first one here the first time each inquisitor ally inflicts purge they recover five percent protection and inflict a stack of purge until the end of the encounter this can't be evaded at the end of the encounter for each purge dispelled the enemy has a 50 percent chance to gain one stack of purge so it's just a way of reapplying purge and i think there's a lot of potential there for inquisitors Next up, we have Retaliate, which is a buff you're gaining for your Inquisitors. So we are introducing new buffs, and this is going to be interesting for how things work. And this new buff, when damaged by an attack, deal 20% of the damage received per stack to the attacker. This damage can't defeat enemies. It's, it's interesting, we're introducing new mechanics. If you want to pause the video and read the rest in detail, please do, but we are getting on with this video. Again, I'm just going to hold it here for a second, just so you guys can actually pause and look at it in your own time. I mean, in the end, these are just for you to look at. As you can see here, there are a lot of modifiers, which means that it's, it's going to be hard to roll the one you want. It's a bit like mods, 
but I think that each one is going to have its uses, and some will work in Territory Wars, and some will work in GAC. Let's not forget Omicrons exist. So in GAC, you might not want to use one with a certain team because of your counter, but the counter doesn't exist in Territory War, for example. The other thing here is some of these are very, very similar, and some of them change. For example, we've got whenever a Galactic Republic ally is critically hit, they recover 12% health. Now, we all know that Padme can't be critted when they have protection up, and JMK also can't, so you wouldn't be using that Datacron with that team. Whilst I think it's important for us to be looking for those Datacrons that, uh, that affect the character you have, like JMK, I also think it's important that we don't end up leveling up these Datacrons for no reason to find out that half of it just doesn't work. That's what I'm saying, guys. When you're doing these, if you get a good level 3 modifier, why not just leave it there? There's no reason. You know, if you've got a Lord Vader one, if you've got the one that does the dots for refreshes the cooldowns, just leave it at level 3. There is no reason to take it up to the next level. Now, there is obviously a reason to do it for JMK or those sorts of characters, but what I'm saying is be selective. Try and manage your resources correctly. And, and if you do that, I think you can make datacrons very effective in your roster i think the problem is going to be when people just level all of these up to level nine and some of these one you might not have the characters high enough relic to use let's just say then to account and two the leader and the middle ability just may not benefit you at all so just make sure you're a bit selective or level again i'm going to pause the screen right here so if you want to read and look at the rest of the abilities please do and here is the final selection, so it would appear that Galactic Republic, Resistance, and Inquisitors are the options for today. Also, it would also appear that each of the phases has a theme, so the theme for this one is Inquisitors, so there is double the choice for Inquisitors. Resistance and Galactic Republic only have one selection each. And finally, we have the mechanics for individual characters. <laughs> I don't know guys, we're almost done, don't worry. So, JMK's breakdown. Now, he has three options. Guys, I'm this This is something I have to say. I'm not happy about JMK getting buffed again. Uh, it just sits differently with me. It, it just sits differently with me. But, again, we're here to give you information, not our opinion. So, while JMK has high ground, all allies ignore protection. Uh, it's tough. That already happens against Sif Eternal. But that is not very nice. We'll have to work out how to deal with that when it comes. Next up, JMK has plus 5% max health and max protection per Relic Amplifier. And damage they receive is decreased by 15%. And finally, the first time each turn, Jedi Master Kenobi gains ultimate charge, they gain an additional 6%. What I think this will do is change the meta so you actually put JMK on offense. The reason being, I feel like if your opponent does, you know, if your opponent has JMK Cat and you know they set them on defense. You're going to have to switch them around. The other thing is, I don't think this changes the non-Geo counters to JMK without Cat, because Gas can't have health damaged anyway, so why does it matter? Then we have Resistance Trooper. Remember guys, these characters need to be R7 for these to activate, so you might see this one, you know, the Resistance Trooper, and you might actually say, hey, why do I want that? And, and good question, you might not want it. Uh, but you can make that decision as you go along. So here we have Resistance Trooper. Whenever another ally is defeated, Resistance Trooper takes a bonus turn and their cooldowns are reset. That's option one. And option two is whenever an ally recovers protection, Resistance Trooper gains foresight for one turn. Are these both games changing? Probably not. I'm going to be honest, why would you do these? Maybe you would. And if you think you will, let me know down in the comments below. And then we have Ayala Secura which we've looked at. Then we have Second Sister, and here I'm going to say it again. I'm going to pause the video and just, just have a look at these. Some of these are interesting, but I just, I'm just i wary about time. This is already going to be a 25 to 30 minute video. Just pause the video if you want to see these more in detail, and always be sure. Let me know any questions you have in the Discord and also in the comments below. I'm going to reply to everything. I really want to make sure that everyone watching this video fully understands Datacrons and what they can do for us. Next up we have Fifth Brother and again just pause the video, take a look and there we go. And then we have Grandmaster Yoda, we knew he was going to come around. And interestingly Grandmaster Yoda now suddenly goes in a Qui-Gon team, I have looked at this one already guys and I'm hyped. 
he gains foresight whenever they get whenever he gets foresight galactic republic uh jedi allies deal 200 percent more damage i mean this stacking with qui-gon is going to be a bit bonkers but hey it is what it is then we have ray guys the gls are getting buffs Air to the Jedi deals 75% more damage for each active ally. Ray has plus 5% max health protection per relic amplifier, and the damage they receive is decreased by 15%. And the first time Ray gains ultimate charge, they also gain 6%. Then we have Finn. If Finn is in the leader slot. Now, this is the one that was leaked, by the way, guys, so I'm not going to read this one out, but if you saw the leaks, you would already know about this one. I understand these changes are scary, but what I want you guys to understand is that. These aren't going to be removed. These aren't going to be removed no matter how much you complain. They're going to stay. Same as Conquest. Same as everything else. But the most important thing is they are here to stay. Now, let me know in the comments. What are your thoughts on Datacrons? Are you excited? Are you scared? How are you feeling? I want to know how you're feeling, guys. Because in the end, I'm seeing this through my eyes. And you guys are seeing it through your eyes. So let me know what your eyes are seeing. That's a lot of eyes. <laughs> Anyways, with that said... My name is Glermit. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And thank you guys for all the support. I will see you guys next time.